Friday, September 5. First Friday, every month, we get the POIL, the job data from the immediately preceding month, which is terribly important because of the correlation with the jobs and inflation and the Fed and all of that. And the report that we got today was on the weak side. And it's been instantly dismissed as an aberration and couldn't possibly be true because all the other data is too good. Some of the data is good. Some of it's red hot. A lot of it still really isn't. Uh, so it becomes what Norman Mailer used to call a factoid. Uh, something repeated often enough as fact to become a factoid. So we're going to we'll hold in suspense what the job data means. The interest rate world stayed the same in a cancellation of two things. Job data was a little weaker, but Ukraine all of a sudden has something of a ceasefire, and so we're hanging right at an important uh, point of support on 2.45 for the U.S. 10-year T-note. The backstory, and I, 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 I think the most important data going by is the relationship between the United States and the world, and it's a different relationship than at any time in American history. The globalization, the, the integration of the world's economy. And it begs the question, how is it possible that the rest of the world is sliding into one recession or another? It's true in Europe, uh, Brazil is in some difficulty, India is in some difficulty, Russia for reasons of internal suicide is in difficulty, Japan, Lord knows, and China. How can it be that the U.S. economy is at a, a takeoff moment that would cause the Fed to begin to take away stimulus and be prepared to lean into it if necessary, and yet the rest of the world is just nosing over. Uh, will that nose over from the rest of the world slow us here? And uh, the answers are, I think, pretty clearly no. The rest of the world won't pull us down, um, uh, nor will it boost us, uh, which begs the question, how can that be? First thing's currencies. The rest of the world is going to weaken their currencies in order to help their exports and help them get out of recession trenches. That means our exports are not going to be competitive with theirs, but we're less reliant on exports than any place else in the world. Uh, reduced currency values means that imports to us fall in price, reducing inflation pressures. They also tend to export unemployment and wage structures from overseas, which can slow us down and slow us down to some degree. But the main strength here in the near term is energy. Energy here is cheaper than it is anywhere in the world except OPEC states. But the, it still doesn't hit the question, how? Um, how is it that the United States, for all of the chewing on each other we do here, how is it that we alone are in a recovery process? We haven't recovered. It's not much of a recovery, but at least we're in a recovery process. And the answer sounds like, foolish patriotism, and I don't mean for it to sound that way, but never forget that this place has the most flexible economy in the world. There's less political influence on the economy than anywhere else in the world. We're not entangled in strange ventures involving a currency that shouldn't exist. We don't have political parties which have their own vested economic interests, not just in their constituencies, but owning significant amounts of the economy, as China does. We're not 30 years over the edge of an irreconcilable immobility of the kind that is present in Japan. So I bring a funny kind of good news this week. The economy isn't hot enough to attract unpleasant attention from the Fed. It's the best economy on the planet. Nice to be here. Good weekend.